watching the CP News weekly video brought to you by Earnerberry's new Insights offering, which is now live. This largely digital offering allows subscribers to read, watch, and listen to impactful market content in a new way like never before. Through Insights, Earnerberry's expert editorial team, market reporters, analysts, and curated guest contributors will be generating unique content for the protein industry. Be on the lookout for theme launches throughout the year. I'm CP News Managing Editor Amanda Buckle. And I'm Seafood Market Reporter Lauren Castiglione. In our top story of the week, on Wednesday, the House passed the $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package, also known as the American Rescue Plan. There is a lot crammed into the bill, including the $1,400 stimulus check and the extension of the $300 weekly unemployment benefit until September. But for restaurants, the big thing is nearly $30 billion in aid. Each restaurant location will be eligible for up to $5 million in grant money that can be put towards anything from rents and payroll expenses to construction, uh, constructing an outdoor dining area, food and beverages and other supply costs. However, no restaurant group or chain can collect more than $10 million total. And it's also uh, specifically for independent restaurants and chains that have less than 20 locations. In other news, the National Fisheries Institute is fighting back ahead of the release of a new Netflix documentary called Seaspiracy. According to a brief description by the streaming provider, the film examines the global fishing industry, challenging notions of sustainable fishing and showing how human actions cause widespread environmental destruction. NFI's VP of Communications, Gavin Gibbons, sent a letter to Ted Sarandos, the co-CEO and chief content officer at Netflix. Gibbons wrote that we understand that as the owner of the virtual theater, you get to pick out what your viewers are offered, but you also know that the producers of this film are vegan activists. They're not documentarians. Gibbons cheekily suggests that Netflix create a propaganda category instead of looping the film with other documentaries. Meanwhile, Les Hodges of Les Hodges Seafood Consulting reports that crab sales continue to remain strong at retail. Les writes in his latest column for Seafood News that the Food Industry Association released the 2020 Power of Seafood report confirming that the seafood industry lived through in 2020. The overall seafood category was up 28.4% at retail, exceeding the growth of produce, which was up 11.3%, uh, and meat up 18.7%. The greatest annual growth was in crab, which was up 60.2% and lobster at 59.9%. A primary question facing crab importers and marketers in 2021 is whether this growth can be sustained and Les Hodges uh, says that unfortunately the answer is no, there is just not enough crab. You can find his full column on Seafood News by searching Les Hodges. And finally, in some delicious news, 7-Eleven is introducing wild Alaskan Pollock fish bites. So the new hot food offering, which features five bite-sized uh, herb panko crusted pollock fillets on a skewer with a side of tartar sauce for dipping, comes after the popular convenience store found success last year with the launch of their herb crusted wild Alaska pollock sandwich. The limited time offering comes during Lent, so customers looking for a meat alternative have something new to try. Those enrolled in the Seven Rewards Loyalty Program can score the fish bites for just $3 when using the 7-Eleven app. I think a new Watch Us Eat video is in our future, Amanda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so everyone, subscribe to our channel below and be sure to head over to seafoodnews.com or visit the Seafood tab in Comptel for a comprehensive look at the latest market and industry news. And don't forget to listen to a new episode of Seafood News Podcast, released on Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes every week. Thanks for watching, and you? See? Well. well. <laughs>